Okay, so for vlog number eight, I have a guest with me that some of you might know. This is Bob, Hello. for those of you who don't know. Um, and uh, the reason that Bob's on this vlog is because he ended up doing a seven day water fast over the past week and he just broke the fast last night. Um, and last weekend when I had recorded vlog number seven, I was around the 48th hour of my first 72 hour long fast. So been definitely getting lots of questions and people wondering, you know, what was that like? So we wanted to record something for you guys where we could share our experiences of prolonged fasting with you and what that was like for each of us. Um, and I just want to, you know, reiterate that this is not a how-to video, you know, like none of this is intended to take the place of the advice of your healthcare professional or doctor. Um, you know, there are certain people who should not fast. And if you're concerned that fasting might not be for you or you have a medical condition or on certain medications, then definitely check with your doctor. Um, right off the top of my head, children under the age of 18, pregnant and breastfeeding women are not good candidates for fasting. And if you are malnourished at all, then not eating is a really bad idea. So um, I just wanna say that we're simply on this vlog to share our experiences and just basically talk about what it was like for us as well as you know what we know about fasting now and what we might do differently in the future um, or what we might do the same because I think I can pretty safely say that it was a pretty awesome experience for, for both of us. But I wanna let Bob start before I you know, take over and tell you guys about um, the last day of my three day long fast and then the results that I got. So um, yeah, Bob, why don't you share with people what you experienced over the past week of having nothing but water and sure. salt. Sure, <laughs> well, I wanna first put out there that I had no intention of taking this to a week. Um, Stephanie was doing her 72 hour fast and Kind of just to be supportive and also you know it's it's on the first day when i was just stuffing my face when she was trying not to eat i felt felt pretty bad you know it wasn't it wasn't the most supportive thing i could do then i was like you know what you know it's it's holidays happened it might not be a bad idea to detox just from being on the plane and i had a cold i just couldn't shake and i've heard about you know the regenerative slash Im immunity boosting effects of fasting because it basically just puts you in a, a deep state of ketosis very quickly. So I was like, sure, I'll try this out. This young lady uh, had her worst day on the second day, I believe, when, and I think she spoke about that in her last video. Uh, I had my worst day on the first day, probably because I was, um, I was pretty fat adapted and I think the whatever like deep transition that takes over happened a little bit sooner for me. Mm -hmm. um, so it was, it was pretty awful. Um, I got uh, it, you know, clearly severely hungry. The hunger pangs and everything you know did not want me to do this but I also started to get a really bad headache uh, kind of migraine but not quite. Basically yeah day three once that once whatever switch flipped surprisingly easy to make it through a day on just water. Um, I, I was pretty floored actually how easy it was. I, um, I went to the gym that day with, again, no expectations. I figured I'd be super depleted and not be able to do anything. And, you know, it was a leg workout and got through it pretty easy. Um, not, not my best performance, but could just basically just an average, you know, I could have done better, but I'll take it. Um, yeah, and, and basically hunger level days three through six, kind of just, they all felt the same. And I think that's why I didn't stop is because I got through the end of day three. I was like, I feel fine. This is not a difficult thing to do. I'm just gonna keep going. And as, and every day I intended that's evening, I'm gonna go eat and I'd get there and be like, nah, you know, I can, I can carry this through. And once I got to like day five, I was like, well, might as well do a whole week. Why not? That's what everybody says you're supposed to do once a year. Um, but yeah, I think that was the most surprising part of this entire thing was one, you can go seven days without eating. I was floored. I mean, when I got to like day four, I was, I, I was, I could not believe how functional I was. I mean, the hunger would come in waves, usually around like 11 o'clock, one o'clock, kind of mid brunch, lunch time. And if I just kept myself busy, they would just like, I, your body was just, my body was just kind of like, Cool, we're not getting anything, that's fine. We'll go back to what we were doing. I wanted to point out though, that 
I did hit a PR on military press on Tuesday and a PR on deadlifts on Thursday. So I worked out four times that week and on, on, I, I sent her a text on Thursday when I'd done the deadlifts that I had outrepped what I did the week before and I hadn't eaten in six days. <laughs> It, and I was I was shocked. I didn't expect myself to have any performance rather than improved performance. You know, the 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 dogma is you have to eat to maintain strength. If you're losing weight, you can't expect to keep the muscle. You're definitely going to get smaller. And, you know, that's what I was expecting. Now, that being said, over those seven days, I lost over 10 pounds. But according to the podcast we've been listening to, according to the books we've been reading, that should be just all fat and it should be maintaining muscle. Well, it's mostly water weight. It's, it's mostly, not all fat. So wait, <laughs> okay. So I did, well, visually, the weight I lost, I think was all fat. Now that was, I did lose about 10 and a half pounds, but keep in mind that, you know, you usually have two days worth of food moving through your system on mm -hmm. the inside and by day, three that was definitely all out of my system um yeah and uh, you know you'll and you'll lose a little bit of, of water coming off there too so i don't think I, it probably about five pounds of actual fat loss mm. within that week which is phenomenal in that is, seven yeah. days that is extremely extremely quick and the fact that i lost the weight that quickly and didn't experience just like rapid strength declines and rapid loss of muscle mass um, just through every, every bit of common sense that we had out the window. I, the whole experience was mind blowing to me. I was expecting like a bad after effect or mm -hmm. like, so this is all going to catch up to me, something like that. But yeah. I had my meal last night. Um, everything tasted delicious. It wasn't a huge amount of food. I don't think you, you really, you really don't feel like eating that much. Mm -hmm. And there are, um, there are ways to break a fast, yeah. um, you know, they say to eat a small snack or a very small portion of food and wait 30 to 60 minutes before eating any more, which is, you know, also what I did when I broke my sure. fast. But I wanted to ask you, because I think a lot of people are probably wondering, you have a regular basic like nine to five job, you Correct. know, and so did you feel like there were any differences in your work performance going to work all week, not having eaten you know, since last Friday night. <laughs> it was, was it was strange. I expected just to be um, asleep the entire time. Mm. I expected to be completely burned out. Um, but no, it's actually, it was, <laughs> I hate to admit it, it was really convenient because I didn't, you're not eating, so you're not, I don't have to get up and make breakfast. I didn't have to prepare anything for lunch. I got home, no dinner to make. No I dishes, just, nothing. No dishes. <laughs> I just like got home and I was home and could like, you know, I, I, it saved me like two hours a day. Um, and quite honestly, if I could get away with just eating on the weekends and then fasting <laughs> all through the work week all the time, I would probably do it. Sometimes when I talk about the benefits that I've been getting from with uh, the intermittent fasting that I've done and then that 72 hour fast that I, I never thought I could fast for three whole days. I never even thought that that would even be healthy for me. Um, and just the fact that like I felt so good, you know, like I find myself, I'm glad I have this vlog because it's hard for me to keep my mouth shut about it. And I'm sure it annoys some people, um, just like how talking about the ketogenic diet when, you know, if you've tried it and you feel really good and you get these really great results, it's like, of course you're gonna want to talk about it and share it with people, but it just feels like, you know, with fasting, it does feel kind of like you've found the fountain of youth and it's, you don't, feel like you're trying to sell it to anybody because there is nothing to sell it's free and not only is it free like like you said it saves you time it saves you money like there are so many benefits to doing it that like if fasting is something you want to implement in your life like it's probably going to be a really really amazing good thing to do yeah so yeah like on that note i just want to wrap up for you guys what my how my 72 hour fast went because my last vlog I was 48 hours in I had gotten through the hard part um, and then that last day was it was easy but I did feel more hungry like I was thinking about food more and I think it's because I, I knew I was it. going to yeah. break the fast and I was like okay tonight I want to break the fast and I could have gone longer but um, I just 
I didn't want to push it too hard. And I'm like, there's going to be plenty of opportunities yeah. if I want to do a longer fast in the future. And I, I knew my period was coming up, um, you know, towards the end of the following week. And I wanted, you know, having somewhat low iron, the last thing I wanted to do was deplete myself. So I broke the fast on Sunday night, um, right at the 72 hour mark. And my appetite was good. My digestion was good. I waited about an hour and 20 minutes before I ate another meal, which my meal, my second meal was just like a really fatty pasture pork neck steak um, and I drank some kombucha with it and then I wanted some dark <laughs> chocolate for dessert and that then my body was like that was perfect you're done you're fine um, I didn't actually have a bowel movement until like a day and a half later so I began my fast on a Thursday at 4 30 p.m had a bowel movement the next morning but was fasted at that point probably like 18 hours yeah. Um, then I broke the fast on Sunday night. And even though I ate Sunday night and I ate, you know, throughout the first half of Monday or first three quarters of Monday, I didn't actually have a bowel movement until Tuesday. And the reason I'm bringing this up is not because, well, I don't know if you know me, maybe you're like, Stephanie just can't help herself and wants to talk about poop all the time. It's like, yes, but these are questions that people have. Everyone's body is going to respond differently. I I had absolutely no problem. My body like came back online. Everything was fine. Everything was normal. I just, it stopped me up for a few days because obviously I wasn't eating any food. Whereas, you know, Bob had an opposite like detox reaction, which you'll also, if you do some digging around on the internet, find that one or the other fasting, is going to happen. Yeah. Fasting gives people diarrhea sometimes and not like, oh, I had diarrhea and now it's all out of my system. But like, why can't I stop having diarrhea? And why does it like smell like a dead body just came out of me? Detox kind of only diarrhea. The, only the first day that that happened. Well, it that's good. Really yeah. Bad. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But then, yeah, just the, not fun, but it happened. Yeah, I did have I did have some some diarrhea. The it was like the third day, or fourth day, wasn't it? Yeah, I think it was it was Tuesday because it happened at four o'clock and I was like, what the hell's going on? So on the fourth day. Yeah, yeah, I was like, what the hell's going on? And then like, you know, <laughs> what I, just, is this? I just had to, I was like, <laughs> I haven't eaten in days. What the hell is happening? <laughs> so I don't know where that came from. So yeah, on, on Tuesday and then I think two or three more times. Um, but it's just like once a day, you'd, you'd feel it do your thing. And then you wouldn't, I mean, my stomach didn't hurt. I don't, I, yeah, I he, guess that was just the, you know, the bacteria, your microbiome is going to change quite a bit. Like when you haven't been taking any food in, um, it can be a detox reaction. Also, and I, I read, so normally when I'm on the ketogenic diet, I, I eat a lot of salt. Um, your body just flushes a lot of water. It, it helps to keep it in, helps to keep you remineralized. So I take salt and occasionally magnesium. Um, I think the diarrhea was probably brought on by I didn't taper those down. Mm. Yeah, you were taking like large quantities. I was taking, still. A, I was still, you know, my water normally tastes like seawater. Yeah. Um, and I left <laughs> it, it that way. And then before I go to, you know, when I get home and kind of before I go to bed, I take a, a hefty amount of magnesium. And I, I bet that didn't help. Yeah, well, salt can flush you. A yeah, lot of exactly. people will use right. salt to cleanse because they know that if you drink enough salt water, it will give you the runs and, and clean out your colon. Um, so basically by the time we figured out that that could be a culprit, I had like a day and a half left and, and that I was had just stopped. like, it wasn't yeah, yeah, like yeah, you were getting yeah. dehydrated no. or anything. No, and it was, like I said, it was just like, yeah. it, it was once a day maybe mm -hmm. and that was it. The other thing I wanted to mention about my own fast and breaking my own fast was, you know, I had mentioned in my last vlog that like sticking to a strict ketogenic diet is just like not where I'm feeling like I'm at in my life right now. And I mentioned how much I love like certain carby foods like starchy, you know, sweet potatoes and plantains and sweets and all this kind of stuff. Well, you know, I was feeling so good after my 72 yeah. hour fast. And what was funny is um, I didn't want carbs. And like I bought this giant Japanese sweet potato. I was like so excited and I cooked it and I ate a little bit of it and I was like, don't want this like it <laughs> this was like terrible. i was like upset with myself like I, I was like wait a minute hold on you know i was doing this experiment keto and kettlebells and like i tried really hard and i bought the meter and i did the thing and then i was like i'm not doing the ketogenic diet anymore and then i fasted for 72 hours tested my blood ketones on the morning of day three and i was at 6.1 millimoles wow. per liter That's which crazy. like three to six is the th considered the therapeutic range so i was like practically like off the chart for therapeutic range ketosis. And when it came time to break the fast, like I just felt really good eating 
lots of natural fats and vegetables and things that were like lower starch. So um, because I was feeling so good and I didn't want to just like ruin everything, like I, I, tape, I made that sweet potato last for an entire week, but I found myself like kind of forcing it down. Like my body was yeah. clearly still able to run on ketones. And so it was like, why are you, <laughs> why are you eating all this? this starchy food? Like, <laughs> are you okay? You want to just like gain a bunch of weight? Like what's going on right now? And so something weird happened in the middle of the week. And I don't know if it's because my estrogen spiked because it was like a couple days before I got my period. But, um, I just wanted like a treat and I went to this gluten-free bakery and I got this like, it wasn't even big. It was a, it's called a fruit crostata and it's like a, think about an apple pie, but like miniature, miniature, just like a handmade little gluten-free crust that's like all buttery, nice and thin with a little layer of like apple pie filling. It had like rhubarb and like, there was like two tiny slices of apple on it. And I ate the entire thing walking back to the apartment. It's right across the street. And within 10 minutes, I felt like I had like a ball in my stomach. And then I just felt kind of like nauseated. And I was like, okay, I got to go to work now. So I went to work. I felt like that for like the next few hours. And then I was like, I don't even know why I did that. Yeah. Like it was more of a psychological thing because clearly my body wasn't like, you need carbs, go eat this sugar, like have some sugar. So I was like, okay, eating stuff that, mm. you know, eating the stuff that normally I would have eaten on a regular basis because I like sweets doesn't feel good to my body after I cleanse. And like, if it doesn't feel good to my body right after I cleanse them, why am I gonna go out of my way to like spend all this money on all these sugary things that are like not doing anything for me really? So that was just kind of a good thing to, um, to experience and to know that, you know, <laughs> the second I let go of the idea of being on a ketogenic diet, my body was like, we wanna be on a ketogenic yeah. diet. I'm like, what the, <laughs> come on. <laughs> So yeah, I'm not saying that I am on a ketogenic diet anymore. If you've seen my uh, Instagram story the past couple days, you'll know that that hasn't been the case the past few days. Plantains. And, and <laughs> plantains and like, I, what did I eat? Like a bar and a half of chocolate yeah. last night. I had an edible, so I had the munchies too on top of that. And I, it was the first day of my period. So I was like, give me everything. And I ate the whole thing and it's fine. You know, like I'm okay today. But uh, the point is that I don't want to make that my lifestyle, but I do really like you know, I like the fasting. Um, I would like to do a longer fast next month. So I'm making sure that my body is going to get everything that it needs, that I'm not gonna be deficient in anything before I attempt my fast again. Um, but one last thing that I wanted to say, because I feel like this is something that more people I think are willing to try than a prolonged fast is the intermittent fasting. So a lot of you guys might have heard about what people are calling 16-8 or um, basically time restricted feeding where you eat all of your meals and snacks within um, a certain time period. The 16-8 is a very popular one that a lot of people are following where you fast for 16 hours. Let's say you stop eating at 7 p.m. You go to bed you wouldn't eat again until like 11 a.m. the next day so that your body is fasted for 16 hours, your organs have time to rest, your body has time to clean house, you end up you know, burning fat more easily, um, and then you eat between 11 a.m. and 7 p.m. or whatever your, your 16 eight is. So looking at my work schedule, because I work some mornings and evenings and basically like lunchtime and dinner time, I'm usually working and I don't like eating dinner late at night because that's just, I didn't realize like how much that was making me really groggy in the mornings when I would come home, you know, around nine o'clock or sometimes later and then eat and then your stomach is full. And the last thing you wanna do is lay down because you're like, oh, I just ate this big meal. And then even if you do manage to fall asleep, like the next morning, like I was always tired. I've basically started doing a 16-8 where I eat between 8 a.m. and 4 p.m. And then I go to work and I come home and then I just don't eat. And I'll have like a cup of tea if I need something. But I have been sleeping so much better. I wake up before my alarm goes off. I'm not sleepy because my body's like, and I'm hungry because I haven't eaten in a while. My body's like, okay, we want breakfast now. So I feel like I've found something that works really well for me. Um, you know, and for people like my parents who are like 12 hours without eating, you know, that's crazy. <laughs> I mean, actually, they I talked to them yesterday. They're doing really, really well with that. But I said, well, if 12 hours is easy for you, try 13, try for, fasting 14 hours, you know, try going for a walk in the morning after drinking some water with lemon or um, a cup of hot tea or just some black coffee, you know, go for a walk and then like 
eat when you're really hungry because I think for a lot of people we tend to eat out of habit and out of routine and we don't realize our bodies are probably still processing what we snacked on two exactly. hours before. Yeah. And then everybody's walking around going, I wish I could lose five or 10 pounds or I'm tired all the time or my metabolism's slow. And it's like, well, eating five or six times a day isn't going to help speed up your metabolism despite you know what we've been told for you know decades now about weight loss and, and what's the healthy way to do it. So, um, you know, once again, I do want to recommend if anyone's interested in fasting, you know, buy the complete guide to fasting by Dr. Jason Fung and Jimmy Moore. It has been really, really helpful. I'm really glad that we listened to it. I, I'm glad that Bob was open to it as well um, and that he had such a great experience with his seven day water fast. <laughs> just get the complete guide to fasting and um, just read it. Like even if you're just intrigued by fasting and it's not something you think you can do or that you would ever try, you know, learn about intermittent fasting and why everybody's talking about that now. You know, these aren't fads. Like fasting is like it's as ancient, old as right? yes, it's so <laughs> ancient. It's as old as, you know, it's older, well, it's as old as we are basically. And um, you know, it's some people claim that fasting is the best medicine for a person who's sick, that rest and fasting is, you know, some of the best medicine that you can have. So even if you're not sick and you want to take your health to the next level, fasting might be a, a good thing to look into. Oh, is that it? Yeah. Okay, now we're ending. <laughs> and uh, this is the end of the this video. This is the end of the video.